Okay, it's project time. Uh, this is my absolute favorite project of all time. And I believe it will probably be one of your more favorite projects. No one loves projects, but I bet by the end you will appreciate the work that you do. Okay, so trust me, go into this with an open mind. You don't have to say, yay, woohoo, I'm so excited for this, but will you at least go into it with an open mind? Are your minds open? Are your minds open? Are we focused? Okay. First things first. When is this due? Highlight it. This is due October 12th. What is today's date? The 21st. So how much time do you have to work on this project? Three weeks. And because I give you three whole weeks, if you turn it in late, I will take away a lot of points. Heavily penalized is what it says. It also says, says the same thing in my disclosure. I give you lots of time, so I expect them to be done on time. Here's the general description. I found math in a variety of places outside of the classroom, and I compiled a list for you to discover and appreciate the beauty and applications of mathematics. What you need to do is select one option from below. Let's underline that. How many options? One. You're going to notice down here, option one, option two, etc. You only need to choose one. That's why they are options. You can choose later, you don't need to choose right now, but you're going to choose one of them and you will read the article slash view the videos. Most of them are viewing the videos, only one of them is an article. So you'll view the videos for the option you've chosen and show what you've learned and how it connects to the eight standards for mathematical practice. That's the gist of it, okay? You'll watch some videos, tell me what you learn, tell me how it connects to the math practices. So is this the same project as last year? No, not even a little bit. Here's the directions, and I'm gonna highlight this part because this is actually more important than you realize. Review the eight standards for math practice. We've spent the last couple weeks going over the math practices, so maybe you don't need a ton of review. Maybe you feel pretty confident about them. But the reason why I need you to review all of them is last year you only had to pick one practice and do a poster for one math practice. I need you to know all of them because, oh, remember you can re review these practices by looking at your notes or looking at the videos. Um, but after you choose one of the options listed below, then you're going to write a one page paper or, please underline the or because you're not doing both, or create a one pager. I will explain the differences in just a second. And you're going to show off what you have learned, but most importantly, how it connects to the eight standards for mathematical practice. So you need to be able to say, this connects to the math practice one because it required perseverance. This connects to math practice six because they had to be super precise and accurate. This connects to math practice seven because they had to look at the structure and how things were built. Right, but you need to know what those math practices are so that you can make those connections. We're going to skip the options for just a second. I want to talk about a one-page paper and a one-pager because you have options. You can do either one. So look down at the bottom. What is a one-pager? A one-pager is when students take what they learned from the video slash article and they put the highlights on a single sheet of paper creating a visual summary of the content. A one pager shows the big ideas, connections to your life and connections to the eight mathematical practices, but it does it like a visual summary, it uses quotations, images, graphics, words, etc. The rest of the directions here, it says, watch this video on visual note taking for a quick explanation of one pagers. I cannot show the video on the recording, so we're gonna watch the video later. Students who are watching the video, learning about the project, you'll just have to click on the link and watch it yourself. Um, and you can also see some examples here. So here are some examples of one pagers. 
this year in English, you guys are going to be reading the Odyssey. This is a one pager for the Odyssey. Again, you can see there's a title, there's a border, there's images, different pictures that they've drawn, kind of some explanations about what those images mean, there's quotations, etc. This is a lot easier to read and see what the Odyssey is about instead of having to read a whole entire report or a whole entire essay. This is another one also on the Odyssey. Again, you can see pictures that are drawn, words that describe them. Still has a pretty border. More pages. Lots and lots and lots of ones. There are one pagers on books and movies. There's one that's later on on the Hunger Games. All of these are visual summaries. Okay, all of these are considered one pagers. You guys get the idea? If you want to look at some more, I'll let you look at those on your own through that link. But again, that was this link right in here. If this option seems interesting to you, but you're not sure how to get started, I have a, some templates in my room. We're actually going to use those templates in a couple days and practice this. Um, so that will come at a later time. But I have templates that might help you get started so you feel more confident. Now let's talk about what a one-page paper is. Again, notice the difference here. One-pager one page paper. Will you write in parentheses that a one page paper is an essay? If you choose to do a one page paper, because maybe you're saying I'm just not really artistic, I don't want to draw, draw things, then you do have another option and that's a one page paper. But understand what a one page paper is. It is an essay. Students write a one page. That means one entire page that is single spaced Small 12 point font with one inch margins. You don't get to cheat the system and do size 14 font. You don't get to make your margins one and a half inches. I'm going to be looking for those things, but it is one full page and it is an essay. Notice though that the essay is going to cover the same things as your one pager. The essay is what you learned from watching the videos. It's an essay that includes full sentences, complete paragraphs, should include a discussion on the big ideas, which is the same thing that we have to do on the one pager. How it connects to your life, that's the same thing that we have to do for the one pager, and how it relates to the eight standards for mathematical practice. So you still have to include the same thing, it's just do you want to draw pictures with it, or do you want to write just a whole bunch of words to fill up a whole paper? I'm just curious who was thinking more about a one pager, now that you've seen examples of that. Who is thinking about a one-page paper doing an essay? Okay, I had a lot of students not raise your hand. Please understand that if you're not doing this project, that is almost guaranteed to be an F. So maybe let's think about that some more. I hope that you're choosing to do the project and not just choosing to not do it at all. Now let's look at the options. Now that we know what a one-pager is, now that we know what a one-page paper is, what are the topics that you're going to be writing on or creating a visual summary on? Option one is math and origami. Some of you guys last year helped me make little origami buddies for the second graders. Remember that? So if that was interesting to you, you might choose option one, math and origami. You can watch a TED Talk by Robert Lang as he talks about the mathematics of origami and how origami has influenced surprising in industries. You'll find origami in thing places that you didn't quite expect it. Option two is math by musicians. If you're really into music, this one might be the one for you. Maybe you're into music and you just like to listen to music. Maybe you really like music videos. Maybe you want to be a video producer. All of that is covered here in option two, Math by Musicians. You'll watch the OK Goes music video for their song, The One Moment. And then you'll watch the math behind that music video. You will be truly amazed. Option three is a really cool one. Option three, Do Plants No Math. Vi Hart has a video on spirals, Fibonacci, and plants. I'm going to give you a hint. She talks so fast, you'll probably need to consider slowing the playback down to 0.75. She talks so fast that if you watch it at 0.75, it'll sound like normal. If you watch it at regular speed, she's going to talk too fast, you probably won't understand her. After watching part one, you'll watch part two of the video series. There are three parts to that video series, you only need to watch part one and two. Option four is another TED Talk. Math is the secret to the world. That TED Talk is by Roger and Tonson, and he talks about patterns in math and changing our perspective. So if you're just like, I don't really care for math at all, 
watch this one and it might change your opinion. Um, option five, this is where the article is. Math in surprising places. All the others are videos. This one, read an article on math confidence and its benefits and then watch the video on math and engineering. So those are your options. Think about which one you like. And before I get too far ahead, I'm gonna go to Canvas. All of this is in Canvas, because right now you've got this paper and it has these links. You can't click your finger on that link on your paper and have it work. Yeah, Aiden's trying, it's not working as Aiden, but that's why it's in Canvas. So in Canvas, I've got it in two different places. It's gonna be in here, because it is start, still part of the math practices. However, if you look right here, click here for first term project details and you click there it will pull up that project okay and you can see those links so if you wanted to click on that link it will take you to the right place yeah any questions yes you can start today I encourage you to start today yeah Emily If you turn it in tomorrow, that tells me you probably didn't put in the full time and effort that you should have. So I would say the absolute earliest you should turn it in is Friday. Yeah, that's the absolute earliest. Because if you turn it in sooner than that, then you're probably not putting in the full time and effort that you need to. Addy. No, um, you can go and take a look closer. They don't just have all of the math practices. They're talking about the video. So they watch the video and you're like, wow, that was really cool. I'm going to draw this picture that I saw in the video and I'm going to explain how that connects to math. And then they're like, oh yeah, also that picture is math practice four and they make connections that way. So every single thing, every box is not a math practice. It's, this is what the video says. This is another thing the video says. This is another thing the video says. Does that make sense? Okay, good questions. Uh, so remember, you can click on those links in Canvas, and I want you to turn to the back side, please. It is important to know how it is going to be graded. So, will you highlight one more time the due date, because the due date is listed on the back. Highlight that due date. Here's how it's going to be graded. There are five topics that are going to earn a grade. One of those topics, one of the sections, is the summary of the big ideas. Meaning, you need to watch the video. You need to pay attention and say, this video is about this, 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 and this. That would be a summary of the big ideas. I hope that you're shooting for full points, which means you should focus here on this category. And as you complete the project, read through this and say, have I done this? Have you summarized the big ideas? Are the summaries complete, thorough, and accurate? If you can say yes, then that means you'll probably earn the full four points for that section focus. The next category, connection to the student's life. This is the number one place where students miss out on points, just because they forget about it. So make sure you highlight it. As you watch these videos, you need to think about how it connects to your life. For example, um, I'm not going to give any examples from the videos, but we will watch a video together and practice this all together. And that video is about um, patterns. And so maybe the connection I would see is I had no idea how many patterns were in life all around me, including my own body. That is a connection because you learn something from the video and you connected it to you. So connections to the student's life are clearly explained. Connections may include how the student felt, how the student can apply it or use it, how it will impact the student's future behavior or perspective. So think about that. When I watch this video, does it change how I think about my future behavior? Is it going to make me act different as an adult? Is it going to make me see things differently? How can I apply it to my life right now? Make those connections and put them in your paper or your one pager. The next one, again, connection to the eight standards for math practice. That's why you need to know what those eight math practices are so you can look for connections. Make a connection to at least one standard for mathematical practice. The connection has to be clearly explained. Don't just say, this is math practice two. You have to say, this is math practice two because it shows how we do math and why we do math. That's quantitative and abstract. And underline this part, because this is a part that is skipped. State the math practice. Don't just say math practice one. Say, 
This relates to math practice one, which is construct, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, why am I forgetting this? I, I can't read. Make, make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. So I stated the math practice, and then I'm also going to make that connection. The next category, it says presentation. You're not going to be presenting these. Okay, so it's not that kind of a presentation, but by presentation, I mean how presentable is it? I'm checking quality, neatness, and organization. So the project should be organized, neat and easy to read. Key thing, I want it to be worthy of being used as a display, just like those up on the wall of fame. And make sure that it contains the title of the media. For example, if you're doing option one, you should call it math and origami. If you're doing option two, it should be math by musicians, etc. And the last one is broken up into these two things. That's why there's a gap here. If you're doing a one pager, the one pager contains at least four images. So again, look at those examples. They all have at least four images. Those images should be created by the student. That means you're not going to take a screenshot of the video, print it off and put it on your paper. You're going to recreate it with your own hand. It should have two quotations, at least two quotations. It should have a border of some sort. It can be an artistic border. It can be word border. It should have artistic text. And it should contain some color. When I say artistic text, and you look at those examples, by artistic text, that means, yes, there's words, but the words are decorated and they're pretty. So maybe you're using block letters, and then you're going to do patterns on the block letters. Maybe you're just going to do extra curly cues, like there's one over on the wall of fame that says Fibonacci sequence in plants, and then it shows like the S turning into a vine of a plant. That is what we mean by artistic text. It's not just text, it's pretty to look at because it's artistic. Some of you are not focused right now, just remember this is a big part of your grade. Doesn't matter to me what your grade is, but it should matter to you what your grade is, so you should be paying attention. And the one page paper requirement. This is a typed, single-spaced paper, one-inch margins, 12-point font, and again, it is a full page. Correct grammar and spelling are used, and complete sentences and paragraphs are used. If you want to write the essay, you absolutely can, but I'm going to be pretty strict. The only way to earn a four is by doing those things. And please also highlight this. This is kind of a big deal. Please turn in this paper with your project. Staple this rubric with this side facing up, and guess what? Just by doing that, you get one extra credit point. You know how rarely I do extra credit. Take advantage of this one extra credit point that goes in the test category. It's kind of a big deal. Okay, any questions? I'm gonna show you this video, this video right here. Are there any questions before we do that? Then I'm going to end this recording so that we can watch that video. At the end of this recording, make sure you watch that video as well.